Hey everybody, welcome back to the kitchen with me. I am thrilled that you decided to join me today because we are going to be making something that is fabulous. I'm not kidding, we're making country fried steak and gravy. Now listen, some people insist on calling country fried steak chicken fried steak. Now I get their logic behind it, but I just think it's unnecessary to use chicken when describing this particular dish because, I mean, there's no chicken involved and we're just using breading. We're gonna bread the steak, I suppose. The comparison is like you're gonna bread the steak like you would the chicken. But I'm leaving the chicken out of mine, not even in the title. So we're just going with country fried steak and gravy. It's not hard to make and it's delicious. And let's get started. Now I, in the past, well, when I say the past, my mama used cube steak. Now back when I was a kid, the butcher would run the steak through the Cuban machine more than twice. I think nowadays if you go to the grocery store and you pick up a pack of cube steak, I think they only let it pass through those grinders one or two times because they're so stinking tough. You can't chew them. You sure can't cut them with a fork. They're not even really fit to chew. So I gave up on buying cube steak and I just kind of make my own. Now what I have bought is, this is a sirloin medallion and it's, it's not very big. There was a pack of four. It's plenty enough for two to three people. And I have pounded out three of them. So let me go ahead and pound out this last one and show you what I mean. Because pounding out helps to break down the tissue in this muscle fiber. Um, if we're looking for fork tender in our country fried steak, we want to beat the devil out of it. So we'll be able to break those fibers down and the meat will be tender and then everybody's happy in the universe. So let's get busy with our whacker. And it's loud. But it needs to be. Cause you're breaking down fibers. And sometimes I'll use the big side. Sometimes I'll use the little side. Because, well, that's what you do. And you don't have to do it a thousand times, but you do want to make sure that you cover the whole steak with a few of these holes. Let me get it with the big side. Mm. You're having a bad day? This is a great stress reliever. Just beat the food out of it. Okay, I think this is sufficient, and I'm in a good mood, so I don't really feel like whooping up on anybody. So, and I used a piece of I used a towel and some plastic wrap so to keep down the noise a little bit and to make it not so messy. So there's my method. Now here are our lovely little pounded out steaks. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat up my oil in my pan because I want it to be nice and hot so that when I get these breaded, they're ready to jump in the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my new fancy smancy little stove here. Boom, there she goes. I'm gonna go about medium flame. Gonna get my frying pan. Woohoo! Put my frying pan on the heat. And now I'm gonna go in with Bingo! My oven's ready. So that when I get these done, I can stick them in the oven and they won't get cold for dinner time. Cause this is what Brad's having supper night. I'm going to put Pretty good amount in the bottom. I'm not wanting to do like a dry pan fry where you just have a little bit of oil. I am putting considerable oil in that pan, so that's probably a cup. And this is peanut oil, because it's what I have in the pantry. If you want to use canola oil, that's your business. If you want to use vegetable oil, Crisco, melted, whatever, you can use whatever you want. I don't suggest using olive oil, because number one, well, that would be expensive. And number two, this is not the subject matter for olive oil. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't. Just saying. So, I got this heating up and it's gonna be coming to temperature in just a minute. So, in the meantime, I'm gonna get busy on my breading. So, I've got an egg. 
one egg. And I'm gonna beat him up just a little bit. And then we're gonna add some milk. Probably mm, half a cup of milk going in. Cause we only got those four steaks. So we don't have to get all crazy with our dredge and our liquid. But you do want to mix it up together, break up those yolks, and get that white part all gooshed up in your milk. And you can season this if you want to. I don't particularly ever season my liquid. I'm going to season my flour right now. So I have put about two cups. And I used self rising this time because I like how the outside breading on a country fried steak is a little bit puffy. And if you were to use plain flour, it's not going to really give you that nice little puffy crust. And, well, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm using self-rising flour. And you know that means it's just got the leavening in there, so it's going to rise up just a little bit. So this is two cups of self-rising flour. And to that, I am going to add some pepper. Got me... Let's go with a punch and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And then I'm going to go in with some onion powder. We'll go a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And we'll do the same with some garlic powder. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now we got to get the salt. Let me grab my salt cellar. I left it on the back table. Now, salt is a different story. We're going to go in with two with eight teaspoons, so that's two half teaspoons makes one. Because when you're cooking with meat, you you really need salt. Salt's your friend when it comes to cooking proteins and things because it just helps accentuate the flavor. So if you're not on a sodium restricted diet, use your salt. So I don't know. I have a feeling I might need a little bit more salt. So I'm going with a teaspoon and a half of salt. Bing. So, put that down. Now I'm going to fill it up and then woo, give it a shake. I love Ziploc bags because it's so nice to not have to mess up everything in the kitchen. Look at that. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So, I'm going to take this up. My little towel because I don't need my towel anymore. Pour it right there. And I'm going to scoop my over just a little bit so you can see that it's, it's coming up and it's oh it's getting real nice and hot so in we go first off we're going in our wet our wet mix so take the steak soak him in there get all his little cracks and crevices full of the egg wash and then we're going to stick him in the bag of seasoned flour now I just pick him up and shake him around like that. That just makes sure that he gets down in there and dust, kind of like an elephant on the Sahara. I don't know where that came from, but it just came to my mind. So anyway, that's what we're dealing with, folks. My brain. My brain. All right, so now I'm going to shake that flour off. See, I'm shaking, shaking, shaking. I'm just going to lay him back over here on the plate, and I'm going to do that to the rest of these steaks. In the bag, shake around, and then pull them out. This isn't hard, y'all. It's real easy, and it's tasty, and, you know, these four, these four little steaks, well, since they were a serving wing medallion, well, it was more expensive than buying a key steak, but... You're worth it. You're worth it. Spend a little money if you can. And buy quality ingredients because the end result's always going to be a lot better. Just saying. You don't want to spend all evening chewing on a big old tough piece of cheese steak. Alright, there's one. And then one to go. So let's put him in the egg wash. Cold and ground. Okay. In the bag. And I'm gonna shake him. Can you tell I have fun in here? I do. I love to do this. 
All right. So I have got my four steaks breaded. They look grand. And I am going into the oil. Now let me pour a little bit more. Be careful, Jamie. Uh, let's see if that oil's ready. The best way to test to see if the oil's ready. My mama used to show me this. Just take a little flour and go, oh, oh, and it did it. Poked up. It started bubbling. So I know that oil is good and hot, and it's ready for these steaks. So I'm going in. And it ain't going to take no time to cook these because we've pounded them out so nice and thin. Shut up. Can you hear that sizzle? I am so happy. I wish y'all were coming to eat dinner with us. Heck, I would buy all more steak if I thought y'all would come over. So we'll start with those three because we don't want to crowd them because if you were to crowd them up one against each other, that creates steam. Steam is moisture. You don't want moisture when you're trying to build a crust because that just makes things soggy. So we'll let these cook just for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've washed my hands. These are cooking up just wonderfully. My flame is just right. I, I'm kind of new to using this little gadget. I like it a lot. I might have to talk to Brad about changing that old plate bowl over there and get me a gas range. Because I'm digging it. And it smells so good. Now listen, don't be crazy when you're flipping these things. You only need to flip them once. You let them sit there and fry probably three minutes. What time are we looking at? I can't. I need to let these go for another minute or two, and then we'll flip them. If you stand here and flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop, well, you're not doing anybody any good. You're losing your temperature, and it's just soaking up more oil than it needs to, and trust me, let them lay, and then we'll flip them after about three minutes. So, I'm just going to stand here. Do, 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 do. And you'll see the blood is coming up to the surface, and that's normal, and that's what you want to see. Now, if you were real into big old thick heavy crust, you could have dumped those things again in that egg and milk mixture, and then dumped them again in the flour. Then you would have had a big thick breading. Some people prefer that. Um, it is totally about preference. That's my big thing about cooking, y'all, and you'll hear me say it over and over. Preference is everything. It's all about how you like it. If you don't like something, well, then don't put it in there. If you have a favorite something, that's what you need to go with. You, need, you just need to do you because what I do might not work for you. So I'll do me and you do you. And for some reason, you get a kick out of watching me do me. And I'm flattered. But anyway, this method works, though. So, and so if you were to give it a try, I think you would be happy with it. Um, I'm going to lift up the corner just a little bit to check what, we're, what we got going on here. Oh, they're ready to flip. There we go. Look at that. As nice and crunchy brown on that side as you want. Going in on this side, we'll flip him over. And now we've got plenty of room in this pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this last steak, get him going. And we'll make sure that he doesn't touch anybody because we don't want any steam, right, children? All right, so we'll let this cook for a minute. I'm gonna put my trash plate back here. Now, I wish you could smell this. Fried foods are just delightful cooking. I don't know if you've ever been in a park lot somewhere, a fast food restaurant, and you can smell french fries cooking. That's a, that's a pretty good thing in my opinion. So, but everything in moderation, right? All things in moderation. Mm -hmm. 
Brad's gonna be so excited when he gets home from work. And I'm gonna be excited if these suckers are full tender. I think they will be. They'll at least be nice and tender to chew. Okay, these have gone for about four minutes on this other side. Now, I'm gonna turn it over so you can see how perfectly, look at that, golden brown and delightful. So they're ready to come out. So I've got a plate and I lined it with a little bit of paper towel. And I know that these are done because there's no blood running, um, which is good, that means it's done. Drain him off a little bit. Now this one, it's spinning. Come on, flip him over. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. And I'm tickled because I'm only cooking on a medium to medium low flame. Because all these goodies that are in the pan, I want to try to keep them not burned. Because we're going to make pan gravy out of this. And if you cook it at too high of a temperature, these little goodie bits and pieces are going to get burned. And then it'd be like eating pieces of charcoal. And who wants that, right? So just be patient. Medium heat. Medium low. Even better. And we'll get there. It might take a little longer, but it's worth the effort. I promise. Mm. All right, so this last one is ready to come out. He's been three minutes on this side, so look at him. Perfect. So I'm gonna stick him over here on this plate. And put this down and we'll stick them in the oven so they'll stay nice and kind of crunchy because we don't want soggy now here's the deal and be careful you got to be careful in the kitchen see all these pan drippings well we want them but we don't need all this oil to make our uh, make our gravy so I'm cutting the heat off so I don't blow myself up. And I'm gonna pour off some of this oil. And I'm gonna try to leave the tasty, yummy, goody bits in there. I think I probably wanna leave maybe a tablespoon or two of the oil in there. Just a quiz, let me put this down. Oh, that's hot. All right, and then I'm gonna take this and wipe my pan off, and then I'll go back on the heat, and I'll turn it back on, and now I'm going on pretty low temperature <clears throat> for this, because you'll see how nice and brown it is. If it looks burned to you, it's just the camera angle. It's not burned. This is a good starting point. Now, I am going to take some plain flour. If you watch my uh, sausage gravy video, then you will remember that we've got to cook the flour. The flour is our thickening agent, and in order to cook it, we got to put the heat to it. So I'm going in with this oil. That's about a half a cup of plain flour. Don't use self rising in this because you'll have a hot mess because it'll it, it just won't be nice. Trust me. Move this around. Just you know. Spread it around, get that oil incorporated so it can toast up. Now, if you were to ask Brad about gravy, his preference anyway, nine times out of ten, he's going to tell you that he likes brown gravy. All mashed potatoes, whatever. Well, if you've got country fried steak, he wants white gravy. So, you know, I find in my married life that I tend to just make him happy. Because when he's happy, I'm happy. And it works. So, 
And he's not real hard to please. He's a good old boy. Those of y'all that know him would agree. And those of you that don't know him, well, come on over. We're home most nights. So what I'm doing, you'll see that the oil has soaked up a good bit. Well, it's soaked up all. The flour has soaked up all the oil. So I'm just pushing it around the pan. Going to kind of let it do its thing. Because we are still toasting it. It's cooking even though you can't see the oil. It is still getting a good toast on the flour. Get rid of that raw taste. I know, I harp on that a lot. But it's just part of cooking. You gotta, if you get the fundamentals down and carry it through every, you know, everything you're cooking, well, then you're gonna be a humdinger of a cook, in my opinion. Now, some folks don't like to follow the recipe or the rules. And I'm one of them because I'm real bad to go off on my own trail. But you can do that after a while when you kind of get a good foundation. Well, then you can wander off the path and you can figure out new things. And that's how people get new recipes. They just think them up. So but this is a good recipe. This is tried and true and I ain't going to lie. So this is... It's toasted up enough. I can tell the smell coming off of it. It's not, yeah, it's nice, it's toasty. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a little bit of beef stock. Since this is a beef steak, while I am going to use flour, I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of beef stock just to enhance that beef flavor because we're not gonna get a whole lot of beef flavor from the drippings because there wasn't a whole lot of fat on that steak. So I'm going in. And that's probably half a cup, maybe. And we're just stirring it around and you see it's getting thick and kind of goofy looking. Well, that's just fine. And now we're gonna eat it with our milk. This is three cups of just regular 2% milk. And I'm gonna stir it around, get these lumps down. Now you think, oh my goodness, there's lumps in her gravy. Oh, it's a tragedy. Oh, it ain't. We're gonna get worked out here in a minute. So just settle down. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I know what I'm doing sometimes. I do know what I'm doing in this regard though, because, well, you know, lumps happen and you just work them out. It's just like life, y'all. Sometimes life's hard. You get a lump or two. Shake it off. All gone. <laughs> so I'm just going to stand here. And I'm stirring these lumps. Working them out with my whisk. Because I know that they're going to come together in just a minute. It won't take long either for this milk to come up to temperature. And then all I'll have to do is make some mashed potatoes. Brad's going to think it's a holiday. Country fried steak and gravy and mashed potatoes. Well, it's not a holiday. It's just a kind of a dreary day. But it's a good day for cooking. Okay, this has came up to boil. Low simmer. You can just see the bubbles breaking the top. Now, it took about three or four minutes. Now, if you look in here, you're gonna say, well, Jamie, that gravy's full of lumps. It's not that it's full of lumps. These are those little bits and pieces off of the steak as it fried up. And it's just little flavor pockets. It's not really big old honked and lump of flour because we have incorporated everything. It's just a little yummy goodness. It's a flavor ball, y'all. That's what it is, a flavor ball. Now, this is the way I prefer it. If you want to, uh, if you have one of those immersion blenders, feel free to blitz it 
and you can get rid of this, but I like this part. This is, I think it's about right. So now we're going to put some seasoning in it because we need a little salt and pepper. And want everything. So I'm just going to eyeball it, sprinkle it. Yeah, about a quarter, quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm going in with a good sprinkle of salt. Probably again about a quarter to a half. I'm going to get my handy dandy whisker back. And this is about all she wrote, people. I'm stirring it. So I'm going to taste a bit. See how my, my salt is. We can put it to bed. It'll be done. Here we go. Mighty fine. Mighty fine. She needs a little more salt. No lie. So go in with a, at least a half a teaspoon of salt. So there's the rest of what I should have put in earlier. And we can consider this a done deal. This is going to be perfect on our country fried steak. It's going to be perfect served over a big old pile of mashed potatoes. Brad's going to be happy as a pig in a puddle. And that's going to make me happy too. So, I've enjoyed being here making this for you. I hope that y'all got something out of this little tutorial. It's not hard to make. It's just a method. You just follow the method. You can't go wrong. And people will love it. They'll be impressed that you know how to cook country fried steak and gravy. Remember, it's not chicken fried steak. We're in Georgia. It's country fried steak. I would appreciate it if y'all would give me a like on the video comment section. Um, heck, subscribe to my channel. That would be even more wonderful. You can check me out on Pinterest these days, too. I'm just getting around. Let me tell you, I'm going all over the place. Just trying to get the word out because I'm having fun and I like to share a good time. So, if you're interested in the recipe, it will be listed below the video in the little description box. Every video I've done, that's where you'll find the printed recipe. So, you don't have to keep going back and watching the video over to make sure you caught something. Because it's listed for you. Just copy and print and paste. Or copy, paste, and print. Whatever. I don't do computers. I do gravy. Y'all have a good evening. Bye.